the key ingredient is the pepper wood. These uh, wooden blocks, which has like a white pepper, star anise. That infuses the fish. You don't eat it. It's like a, you don't eat it. Very herbaceous, peppery, really rich. Unlike anything I've ever had. Mm -hmm. That's Anthony Bourdain dining with Chef James Sihabut in Laos on an episode of his popular show, Parts Unknown. Oh, Sihabut fled Laos when his fam with his family when he was young after it fell to communists in 1975. They arrived in Oakland six years later, beginning Sihabut's journey from refugee to culinary rock star. He is the force behind the two Michelin star restaurants, Komi and its sister eatery, Hawker Fair, which focuses on the Laotian cuisine of his childhood. Chef Siaboot's new book is called Hawker Fair, Stories and Recipes from a Refugee and Chef Isan's Thai and Lao Roots. In the preface, Bourdain writes that Siaboot has, quote, done more than any other person in the world to get the word out about this unfairly, unnecessarily secret country and cuisine. Hawker Fair is published by Bourdain's book imprint. Anthony Bourdain and James Siaboot join us at the table. Good morning. Morning. Why is Lao cuisine still a secret, Anthony? Well, I mean, I think we've been eating a lot of uh, Lao cuisine, but uh, in Thai restaurants, uh, so much of the Thai food we love is in fact uh, ethnic Laotian uh, coming from uh, uh, the Isan region. Um, so we're familiar with at least the general outline of a lot of those flavors and a lot of those dishes, and chances are already deeply love them, but, but for the real deal, I think there's, there's more to it besides the, the common um, dishes of lop and you know papaya salads that you see in Thai restaurants that is you know uh, culturally Lao. James, you write in this book, and there's this great little intros too in the beginning, all about your country and about you and your family, which I think are just so rich with history. And you write, just like the U.S. campaign to drop an S load of bombs on Laos during the Vietnam War was called the Secret War, Laos is kind of the secret country. What are some of the most well-known or favorite dishes in Laos? Well, no, I think bamboo shoots mm -hmm. um, they don't see commonly in um, Thai restaurants. Mm -hmm. Even so, of like uh, you know, cooked in a lot of herbaceous and bitter flavors that you're not accustomed to um, in Lao food and in Thai food um, here that's served in restaurants. So you know, the spice levels, the preservation of using you know fermented fish sauce. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not, that's unfiltered. You know, it's not the clear fish sauce you typically see mm -hmm. um, on the supermarket shelves. And that's where the flavor bombs are. That's what makes Lao food really separate and mm -hmm. different from you know, your common Thai food as we know. What happened when you first tried common Thai food? What was that experience like? Actually, the first, com first common Thai food I had was my own, my, my, my parents' restaurant, my, my mother's restaurant. And growing up, I was a restaurant kid. And I was like, what we cook for ourselves and what we serve on the menu, it's like, Mom, um, what's, what what's, what's, what's the deal here? <laughs> you know? What did she say? She was like, this is what Americans want. This is what know? Americans want. You're like, they don't understand. How <laughs> far was the distance between the two? Fairly far, yeah, not, not even a resemblance. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, what I think is so interesting is that you describe this book as an apology of sorts to your parents. You said you were embarrassed and ashamed that you abandoned your roots of Lao cooking and then then you went to culinary school to focus on fine dining, and then you realize, hey, my roots are okay. Talk about that process for you. I thought that was very interesting. Yeah, so because of Lao food and Thai food, that's how I got interest in cooking. You know, I kind of dropped the sideline it to go to fine dining because I didn't see a future career-wise mm -hmm. in Lao cuisine. And, you know, I took the common, you know, worked at all the Michelin star restaurants I can in the world, and. You know, and there was a hidden point where it's like, you know, I, I need to pay homage to how I got started. Right. And it's kind of a shame I didn't know how to cook this food I grew up on. You know, Anthony, um, food is also about hospitality. Mm -hmm. And you write that the Laotian people are some of the most food crazy, generous, most hospitable people you've ever met. And you've yeah. traveled the world. True. Um, look, this is deeply, richly satisfying food with deep, interesting flavors and interestingly, increasingly the kind of flavors that, that fine dining chefs crave after work, you know, spice <laughs> and funk. Um, spice and funk? <laughs> yes. Um, Do we I like think, to eat funk? Yeah, you know, I like, you know, kimchi, <laughs> as, you know, okay, okay. That the, fer the, t the flavor of fermentation. I got it, um, got it. But for me, you know, what's exciting about this book and, and, and so many of the really great cookbooks and chef stories is that story of cultural identity. You know, who's, 
the history of the world, as one chef told me, is in this plate. It's telling a story, often a very personal one, a very old story. Uh, so to me, this is very much a, a book about what it means to be American, who's cooking in America now, what is American food, mm -hmm. um, all these things that we value and, and, and care about. Um, a story of you know a struggle to find or reconnect with ethnic and uh, cultural identity. These are really relevant questions uh, given our current times. Mm -hmm. Well, this is one of the best uh, best endorsements you can have for a book. Anthony Bourdain says this book will make you a better person before you even try a recipe. <laughs> if I could cook, I'd make something. Right. I want to be a better person. Food for the soul you and know, food for the tummy. Food yeah. for the soul and the tummy is right. Nice to see you. Yeah, very nice. Congratulations, you. Anthony. Always good to so have much. you at the table. Thank you, Anthony Bourdain and James Suey Boot. We thank you again. Hawker Fair, by the way, goes on sale next Tuesday. Wherever you like to buy your books, you got lots of choices.